At Bob Jane T Marts, we're Australia's largest stockist of tyres and wheels. When it comes to tyres, our independence allows us to run product testing in somewhat unconventional ways. This allows us to make recommendations to our customers based on brands we trust and knowledge we gain through experience. In this video, we set out to run a comparison test between the Dunlop Grand Trek AT22 and the Grand Trek AT3G. In addition to the performance in various terrains, we set out to measure the difference in fuel consumption between the tyres on the same car, same trip and the same conditions. We're just a little out of Perth on our return leg back to Melbourne. We've got two identical Isuzu's that we're going to be doing some testing again. We've got two Dunlop tyres, so we've got the AT3G and the AT22. By the looks of what the AT3G is, it's a little bit more aggressive than your conventional all-terrain, so expect a little bit of noise, a little bit of increased fluid consumption, um, but I reckon it'll perform well off-road. So what are you expecting out of the AT22? Well, the tread is more of a, a highway terrain pattern, which should be quieter on the road, so it should be better with the fuel consumption, and it'll be good to see how they perform on the different terrains that we'll be experiencing over the next couple of days. We didn't take the easy route to Melbourne. We plan our drive to take the dirt roads around Hyde and Norseman, the beaches on the southern coast, and plenty of highway along the Nullarbor. We kept the cars the same, kept speeds the same, and stopped to get a refuel. Our objective was to find out which tyre felt best in various conditions and how close it would measure on fuel consumption when comparing a more aggressive all-terrain pattern against a balanced road biased all-terrain tyre in the same brand. So we've just done a little over 80 kilometres on the dirt road at the moment. Now we've just stopped over the side of the road to drop it down to 30, see what the comparative difference is. And here is where the weather changed. After our first 80 k's on the Hyden to Northman Road, it bucketed down, which added an unplanned but welcome change to road conditions that would put the tyres through a good run in wet to sometimes extreme wet off-road conditions. Hey there, I'm driving the D-Max with the AT22s on it. Uh, we've just dropped the tyre pressures uh, down to 30 psi and we are driving on a damp to fairly wet dirt road. They're a little bit more noisier um, than what they previously were um, and the stability is a little less. I get a little bit of fish tailing when I get into the really wet struts. Uh, fuel consumption is a little higher. I'm up about 1.5 litres per 100 k's but other than that it's still really nice to drive. So I'm driving with the AT3Gs on the, on the Isuzu D-Max. Dirt takes quite damp, there's, there's been a, a massive downpour. I could honestly say that uh, there's been a significant increase in road noise. The biggest positive that, that comes out of it is that the performance and the overall ride of the car has certainly increased. There's no tram lining, the stiffer sidewalls, the three-ply ratings is, is obviously certainly working its power. It was, you're feeling minimal movement, uh, you're certainly in control, and you're certainly like you're above powering the, 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 the dirt conditions. So I've been driving the AT3G, and uh, something that was surprisingly noticeable is with the light truck construction and the extra high tread blocks, we've noticed that the tyres that I've been driving is considerably warmer than what the AT22s are. Um, surprisingly, with the bigger tread blocks as well, I've noticed that it is reasonably quiet and really, really forgiving. How do you find the AT22s? I find them, once the pressures are up, uh, that the tyre is a lot quieter to drive on. I'm very impressed. Okay, I'm driving the uh, D-Max on the Dunlop AT22s. Handling the rain was quite good. We had torrential rain coming across the Nullarbor and yeah, it was very, very nice to drive on, comfortable. I felt safe at all times. So we've just passed Eucla um, a little short time ago. Um, we've been driving on tarmac for the last probably 600 k's. It performed really well. The disbursement of water was really, really good. Um, it felt like it was in control. The tires are quite responsive. You still can feel those little bumps here and there. But overall performance and grip are really, really good. The fuel economy with these tyres is very good compared to when we had them off-road. 
and at lower pressures. We are sitting on placard pressures at the moment. What I expect out of the tyres going onto the sand is that because even though it is an all-terrain, the tread's very close together and I'm hoping that they will just climb up over the sand and not dig into the sand like aggressive tyres do. So we've just arrived at Scott Bay. I've been dr driving the Dunlop AT3Gs. We've done a little over 1,100 kilometres in tarmac. I, I had the confidence in the dirt, so I was actually doing about 105, 110. It was really, really responsive, really, really controlled. And stiff sidewalls, the three-ply was, was phenomenal. Tarmac was a tad noisy, but again, we, had, we, we were faced with a lot of wet weather, so the performance on that was quite grippy, even though, even though the, uh, the comfort side was lacking with the stiff sidewalls. So how was your tyres? My tyres were great. I'm driving the second D-Max with the AT22s. Stability was very good. Out on the tarmac was beautiful. Dropped the fuel to around about 8.2 litres per 100. Handling on the sealed road is fantastic at um, 110. We were driving in the wet, uh, but loved it. Loved the car, loved the tyres. Nearing the end of our drive, we stopped at Scott Bay, just west of Fowler's Bay. Here there are marked tracks and some dunes, leading to quiet beaches which gave us a chance to unwind and have some fun. As expected, the AT3Gs threw more sand than the AT22s, but both performed well on soft and hard sand. Talking rich, I think the AT22s are better suited to sand, but not just because of their less aggressive tread, but also because they had less stiff sidewall that bagged that better when we dropped it to around 20 psi. So we've just arrived in sunny Sejuna. We've done a little over 2,000 kilometres from Perth in practically all the trains except the snow. Um, I've been driving the AT3G and the overall performance as expected was as stiff as sidewalls made it un a little bit of an uncomfortable ride at the start with the tarmac. Um, but the overall performance in the wet and in the dirt was, was phenomenal. Within regards to the fuel consumption, uh, I, I did spike up in that dirt because I had had that comfort and I had that control and I had that, that confidence that I could, I could actually push it to, to the legal limits. What do you thought with your AT22s? The AT22s were very comfortable and what I expected. The control of the tyres in all conditions was fantastic. Uh, very impressed. Looking back at all the receipts though, the trends and averages are pretty interesting. Over the trip back to Melbourne from Perth, the AT3Gs used 18.8 .8 litres more fuel than the D-Max running the AT22s. With more blacktop driving on the way back than the way up, the total fuel used on the AT3Gs was 327 litres, with an average of 9.35 litres per 100, compared to the 8.82 litres per 100 on the AT22s. At an average fuel cost of $2.48 per litre of fuel, that's almost $50 difference to run the AT3Gs over 3,500 kilometre distance compared to the AT22s. Extrapolate this over the expected life of a set of tyres, it will add up. Fuel consumptions aside, we can confidently say both tyres perform well in the conditions of our trip and what mother nature threw at them. This gives us confidence in recommending either of these patterns from Dunlop as acceptable tyres for most terrains in Australia. They certainly handled our trip from Perth to Melbourne effortlessly. You'll find out more info on our website, and if you have any questions, head to one of our Bob Jane Team Up stores nationwide.